Hello, patrons of the Muncie Public Library. Um, thank you for inviting me to join you in celebrating Women's Equality Day this year. Uh, my name is Christine Exidius. I'm a political science professor at Bucknell University in Lewisburg. Um, and uh, in this short video, I'll be making three points um, about women's equality in 2020 um, and about the centennial, the 100 year anniversary uh, that we're celebrating of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Um, if you're interested, a longer version of this video is available on the library's website. The first point that I'd like to make uh, today is that voting is unimportant right among many. Um, we're celebrating the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution this year, um, which marks the end of restrictions on the right to vote on the basis of sex in the U.S. Um, suffrage, or the legal right uh, to vote on candidates for public office, is one of the most direct ways that communities hold their leaders and decision makers accountable for their actions and, and choices. Um, but there are many rights and liberties alongside suffrage, alongside the right to vote, um, and many of these rights and liberties have historically been restricted for women also. Both before and after the U.S. Constitution, uh, uh, U.S. Constitutional Amendment that ended restrictions on voting on the basis of sex in 1920, um, women as a group had restricted rights in their communities. And so I'll offer one example of this here. Um, equal pay for equal work means that it is not okay to pay um, one employee less than another um, for doing the same job. An electrician who is a woman should not be paid less um, than an electrician who is a man, um, just because of their gender. Um, this might seem really obvious, um, but the 2009 Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act um, is landmark federal legislation about how women employees can sue for pay discrimination. That's 89 years after um, the 19th Amendment. Um, and it's still the case in 2020 um, that women um, with the same qualifications in the same job are paid less than men. If you compare women and men overall, um, women are disproportionately in lower paying occupations and the gender pay gap is 19%. Um, women of color on average make even less. My second point is that expanding rights um, is not a straightforward process. Um, it might seem easy uh, to think that things keep improving over time, um, but sometimes they move backward. Um, uh, Women's Equality Day on the 26th of August celebrates that, for example, women in the United States can legally run for office, political office. Um, they cannot legally be fired um, when they become pregnant. Um, they can apply for financial credit. Uh, but some of what we're celebrating, women had in the past. Then they lost, and then they had to uh, work to regain. In the early colonial period before the American Revolution, laws that were brought to North America by British colonists um, technically banned women from making financial transactions. Um, this was widely ignored in practice. Um, historians know that work for women, women's occupations, um, were less stereotyped and less restricted in the 16 and 1700s than they were uh, in subsequent centuries. Um, for example, in the colonial period, women could own property and could write wills. After 1776, courts and lawyers resumed applying these more restrictive laws about women's right to um, uh, property ownership and financial transactions. Uh, married women in particular had very few rights um, because of a legal principle called coverture. Um, their husbands uh, legally um, had authority over their financial, um, legal, and political choices. It took centuries uh, to get back to uh, some of these more free and equal choices for women. Uh, my last point is about how uh, the story of equal rights for women is complicated because women are diverse. Um, we're celebrating the centennial of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, um, but many women in the United States could not vote until the 1965 Voting Rights Act. If you were a woman of color uh, in 1950 in a state uh, that restricted voting on racial lines, um, it didn't make any difference for you that the 19th Amendment had been passed 30 years before. Um, other factors in our lives matter too. Uh, now, in 2020, we're experiencing financial and social crises related to COVID-19. The story of equal rights for women is complicated right now um, because women are disproportionately responsible for looking after kids and other family members um, at a time when many childcare facilities and schools are closed. Um, so a law does not prevent women from getting a job or getting to the ballot box on November 3rd, um, but um, having to uh, look after kids at home might. In other words, the story of women's equality is global and local at the same time. It's a story in families and in households, uh, in workplaces, uh, in schools, and other public settings all at the same time, here in the US and, and elsewhere. 
Um, if you're interested in learning more about these issues, um, please do talk to your wonderful librarians at the Muncie Public Library, um, and they'll help you find books and other resources. Um, thank you again for including me.